Bless the Lord. chapter 15 verse 13 it says and when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing and wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean first of all the issue is uh, generally these are talking about leprosy and it says the issue is talking about sin and before salvation, we've got an issue. But this verse is dealing with after the issue. It says, and when the issue is cleansed, the, he that has an issue is cleansed of his issue. Have you been cleansed? Have you got that settled? That has to do with salvation. Have you been cleansed of your issue? For this is after the fact. He that has an issue is cleansed of his issue. Then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing. And wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. You see, the Bible teaches everything pertaining to life and godliness. And I'm talking about after salvation. I'm going to speak, preach on the topic of spiritual hygiene. After salvation, you still have to stay clean. Cleanliness is all through the Bible. And this is just a, an example. By way of introduction, um, I've preached to lots of different crowds, lots of different types of people. I've preached to young men, the troubled youth, and they all had one thing in common. They were all in there because they had done something wrong, and it was obvious they were dirty. I preached to my peers at youth camp, and you got to be careful how you preach there. They've all seen what you've done. They all know who you are. You've got to have a clean testimony. I preached to older ladies in a dementia unit where they didn't respond to anything I said, but you still had to keep preaching. My home church, uh, complete strangers in public, we've all done that here. Um, and I've even preached in Mexico where they had no idea what I was saying except for unless there was a translator. What I'm getting at is I believe it's important to know your audience as a preacher. I believe it's important to know who you're speaking to. You'll see that the Lord even altered his message when the Pharisees came. He preached differently. And you need to preach accordingly. I believe, you, uh, I believe here we want the truth. I believe that's why we're here. Bible believers. I believe we want the truth. I believe we're real. And we don't have to worry about the, the uppities. We can just get down to earth. So I want to I want to preach like I said about a, this topic, <clears throat> and I just want to get real. I can't guarantee uh, that what I'm gonna preach is impressive. I can't guarantee it's something we'll all like. I've never been good at making people like me. I can guarantee you that one thing is gonna be from the Word of God. Amen. I'm not gonna put my twist on it. I'm not gonna give you my interpretation. I'm just gonna give you what the Bible has to say about certain things. And today about the topic of spiritual hygiene, how Christians should bathe. Hey, listen, we all grew up. My dad taught me how to bathe physically. He taught me how to wash my body as a young, stinky little boy. Amen. And when there's a certain age, there's a grace period where young kids, they don't stink that much. They go and play. They don't sweat. But, man, you get about 11, 12, 13, 14, you start to stinking bad. And a kid needs to be taught how to bathe. See, Christians, we, we know that. We know that a kid needs to know how to bathe. But when it comes to our own spiritual life, we deny that we even need to be shown how to bathe from yeah. the Word of God. We deny that we're even stinky. You ask a young boy, you say, have you showered? You know you stink. What dirt? You know, did you get the dirt behind your ears? What dirt is what they say? Because they deny they're even stinky. And before you can bathe, my first point, before you can bathe, is that you've got to remove your cover. Listen, that's your clothes. And in the Bible, clothes speak of two things. It speaks of righteousness, but it also speaks of self-righteousness. You go look at Adam and Eve, what they do? They put a covering of fig leaves. Fig leaves in that verse represent their self-righteousness. And the, God, the Lord had to come and change their clothes. But before you can bathe, you've got to remove your covering. You've got to remove this facade of who you think you are, who we think we are, and get before God and get honest and move it all. And if I can say the crowd I have here, you've got to become naked before God and let him see everything. Secondly, before you can bathe, you've got to admit you're dirty. That's what that kid says. That's what a baby says. Did you get that dirty? He says, what dirt? Who's dirty? You've got to admit you're dirty. 
That's something Christians, that's something humans just don't like to do. I don't like to be told I'm wrong. I don't like to be told I'm doing it wrong. I don't like to be told where I need to straighten up, where I need to, to uh, straighten up here and there. Listen, we've got to admit we're dirty. Before we can bathe, we've got to remove our covering. And second, we've got to admit we're dirty. But secondly, after, before we bathe, now what to use to bathe? Well, what do we use to bathe? First of all, what do we use in, in a real bathtub, getting a, a real shower? We use running water. It's obvious, and the Bible speaks of using running water. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse, cleanse it with the washing of water Amen. by the word. He gives two things there. He says, cleanse it by the washing of water, by the word. But we're going to focus on the washing of the water. That is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship, worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. He gives two here. That's the spirit and the truth. We've got to uh, wash with running water. That's the spirit. But secondly, we've got to wash with soap. That's scripture. Listen, Psalms 119.9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Look up at verse... Uh, and again, Ephesians 5.26 says that he may sanctify and cleanse. It takes two things. You can't do one or the other. You've got to have both. You've got to have spirit and truth. You've got to have the spirit of God and the word of God. You, me and Andrew were talking about that earlier, about the denominations and the groups that maybe they focus mainly on the spirit. And they've got good intentions. And, and we were speaking about the, the Pentecostals and them. And they've even perverted that because they tried to do it all in the spirit. And they perverted their, way, their ways and they're dirty. They didn't have the truth. But you've got the independent Baptist, buddy. The Pharisees of our day. And they've got the word of God. They've got the King James Bible. They've got it memorized. They've got a verse for every occasion. They've got a verse for the color of your shirt and tie. They've got a verse for the length of your pants. But they've got no spirit of God. Can I just say they're dirty? You've got to have both. You've right. got to have the Spirit of God, the running water. You've got to have soap. Scripture, can I just say, that is the King James Bible. That's no right. other word. No other soap. You must have something cleaner than you. Is that simple? Listen, you don't go outside and get running water and start picking up dirt and rubbing it on yourself. That's what you get when you get a, a, a perversion. As you're making yourself more dirty. You're making yourself more times a child of hell. You've got to have the right word of God. James 4, 8. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 8. What does it say? James chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Draw nigh unto God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see there? There's spiritual hygiene all through the Bible. Cleanse your hands, your sinner, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye you devil minded. We've looked over before you can bathe, what to bathe, what's used to bathe, and now we're going to look thirdly, where to bathe. And again, look at the audience we got. It's a bunch of young men. I'm going to be discreet, but I'm going to be real with you. Listen, if we want to know how to bathe, we can apply it physically. God's not dumb. Why does he even use these terms, cleanse? Because he uses a parallel between the physical and the spiritual. Where do we need to bathe? Well, first of all, you've got to start. With the head. I want to look over. You don't got to turn there. But back in Leviticus chapter 3. In verse 8. It's given the sacrifices. Do you realize every time with a sacrifice. You know where it starts. It starts with the head. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering. And kill it. Do you hear me? Listen. When you start every morning of your day. And you start to take that spiritual bath. And you start to cleanse up a little bit. You better start with the mind. You better start with the head. Right. But you got to crucify your flesh. It always starts with the head. It starts with the head. It always first, even in the sacrifices. Do you know why it starts with the head? And this will blow Disney out of the water. It's so basic, but Disney doesn't like these type of passages. Do you know why? Because the heart and the spiritual yeah. head right. are synonymous in Scripture. Listen, the heart is deceitful above all things. Yeah. But listen to me. It's not talking about the blood pumping organ to the left side of your chest. It's talking about your spiritual heart, which is your head. And I'll give you scripture to back it up. Proverbs 23, 7. Listen closely. It says, for as he thinketh. Did you hear that, Walt Disney? As he thinketh Breathe. in his heart. Do you hear that? He didn't say breathes. And again, that was in Proverbs 23, 7. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 4, verse 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Luke uh, 6, 45b, it says, 
For the, out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Why did he say his mouth? Out of the abundance of the heart. Not here. Here, it's your mind. It's your thoughts. Right. Amen. Listen to me. You start with the head. Because that's where decisions are made. Ephesians 6, 7 says, take and take the helmet of salvation. Why does he say take the helmet? Why helmet of salvation? Because your head is where you make your decision of salvation. Did you hear me? That starts right here. Every morning when you wake up, you better have that taken care of. Are you saved? Do you even have that, do you even have that settled? Are you saved? It starts with the head. Where to bathe? We're going over where to bathe. First of all, it's your head. Why? Because your head is the spiritual part where decisions are made. Uh, Romans 10.10 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You start with your head because it is your spiritual heart where the decisions are made. Next, your head speaks um, of who's in charge. Turn to 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Moving along here, we're talking about spiritual hygiene. If you don't follow these basic steps, not my perfect outline, but the principles given in Scripture, listen, you cannot be clean. You cannot call yourself clean. You cannot call yourself separated from the world. From the world. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. What does it say? It says, it's going to take a while. I'm a bad reader. It says, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren. Uh, well, we're going to skip over. Verse 6, it says, for well, the woman... <coughs> For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Out of it be shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Look at verse uh, 8. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither is the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And it goes over who's in authority. Verse 15, it says, But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for her covering. But if any man seem to be Contentious, we have uh, no such custom, neither the churches of God. You can read through there, but all it's doing is giving who's supposed to look like what. And so when you're washing your head, you've got to remember that speaks of who's in charge. And young men here, if, if we let our hair get long, it speaks of rebellion. We buck our authority. You cannot wash the wrong head of hair. Listen, you can't wash someone else's hair. You've got to know your place. Where do you rank? Who are you supposed to be under? So as you're doing your devotions, are you in authority to your coat, your boss, to who's in charge of work? Are you in authority to your parents if that's where you're at? Are you in authority to your pastor, under authority, excuse me? Are you in subjection? Head speaks of who's in charge. We don't like that. We're talking spiritually. Washing the head, it's, it's, where the, uh, it's a spiritual heart. Also, it speaks of who's in charge. The head is where temptation starts. Number three. Why do we start with the head? Because that's where our temptations, especially as young men here, that's where our temptations start. And that, that goes for women too. Listen, they're tempted too. And it starts in the head. Yea, as God said. Oh, did, did my husband really mean that? Did the preacher really say that? I wonder what he meant by that. Listen, head is where temptation starts. Right? Job 31, 1, what does it say? Job said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think? Upon a maid. Where's that at? That's the eyes. That's the mind. And it starts when? First. Right. In the morning. It starts first. We got three areas we're going to cover here where the head is the temptation starts. In your eyes, in your ears, and in your mouth. Your eyes, Job 31 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Uh, Psalm said, I will not set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You know how you keep your eyes clean? You keep them closed to some things. Right. And you don't think upon the maid. You don't right. look upon the maid. Listen, yes. you can't be spiritually clean. You cannot um, be uh, practicing spiritual hygiene unless your eyes are clean. And sometimes that just means keep them closed. You ever try to put soap in your eyes? You ever try to undo what you've got in your eyes? There's not much going back. Hey, I, got, I was cutting grass the other day, and I grabbed the wrong pair of glasses. They weren't safety approved, if you will. And man, for a day and a half, it's like someone was pouring sand in my eyes. I was cutting grass and it was every pass. It was like someone was just throwing sand in my eyes. It took a day and a half just to get the stuff out of my eyes. Listen, you don't want to have to wash the eyes to keep those clean. There's a difference. The hair is going to, the head's going to get dirty. Things going to happen. Yes, but the eyes, you've got to keep those clean. Because it's painful trying to wash those out. Good preaching. Painful trying to wash. Ears. We've dealt with the eyes. Look at the ears. Second Timothy chapter 4. What does it say? Let's look. Second Timothy chapter 4. 
4, verse 3 through 4, it says, 2 Timothy 4, 4. And they shall turn away their ears from truth and shall be turned unto fables. Can I say fables are dirty? You say, what do you mean? I'm telling you it's not the right word of God. And if it's apart from the word of God, it says they shall turn away from what? From the truth. Right. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof thy ministry. No, I, I skip verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know why your ears itch? Because you got something in them. Maybe their ears wouldn't be itching for another perversion if they were cleaned out. Their ears are dirty. That's why they're itching. Right. Ears are dirty. Your ears itch when you've got something in them and when there's something wrong with them. We've got, uh, look at uh, Proverbs 26, verse 7 real quick. Got on my little Bible study. Proverbs 26, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 17. Excuse me. 26, verse 17. It says, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife, belonging not to him, is like the one that taketh the dog by the ears. Now, don't we all have a problem with that? Now, listen, we like to see everyone else's issues. We like to see the world's problems going on. Right. I tell you what, there's a church that does that at military funerals. They like to take on someone else's problem. It's like taking a dog by the ears. Brother David gave part of some wisdom to Andrew here, and he shared it with me. How do you say it? Don't and never start a fight. You know why? Because as a Christian, you're always going to have to be defending right. truth. Don't you dare start it. You've got enough. Right. You've got enough. Amen. Don't you dare start a fight. Let me read it again, verse 17. It says, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh the dog by the ears. Because once you let go, it's going to come back to bite you. That's it's right. just going to. Listen, we've got a problem with our ears, our eyes and our ears, and we're still in the mouth that we're even dirty. Let's look at the mouth. Let's see if we're dirty. Let's see if we're clean. Let's look at the mouth. Right. Proverbs 10, 6. We're nearby. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. What does it say about the mouth? Proverbs 10, chapter 6 says, Blessings are upon the head. Now we're talking about the head. He just said it. A head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth. He said, but. You know that knows the basics about English. He said, Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. That just changed the story. If you're just, you get that. Blessings. But if you're wicked, he didn't say just the head of the wicked. He said the mouth of the wicked. You see, the mouth does affect the head. Right. You've got to get it clean before you can go on. You think it's enough just to cover one or two issues and go on? No. You better cover the mouth. That's to do with brushing your teeth. We're, uh, we always get on to, well, mothers do. Oh, she didn't know how much I brushed my teeth this week. Always get on to us as kids. Brush your teeth. Your, your breath stinks. Brush your teeth. Your breath stinks. What's it like being around a, a Christian with a dirty mouth? We've all been guilty, but that's no excuse. Right. We've got dirty mouths. His mouth kept him from getting blessings on his head. What about his eyes were clean, his ears were clean. He wasn't listening to anything wrong. Yeah, but was his conversation clean? Listen, uh, James chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, uh, James 3, verse 5, it says, Even so the tongue is a little member. Now, I like to tell this joke. My, uh, my brother, and, and my brother's plural, and my sister's all tended to be bigger than me. I was always short. I was always small. I had what Jeremiah called, my brother called, LMS, little man syndrome. And when you're little, you've got to make up for it by being loud. That's just a fact. And I had that. You've got to, you've got to bloat your arms a little bit because you knew they weren't as strong as all the others. My brother weighs, uh, he probably wouldn't want me to tell the story, but he weighs about 260 pounds. I weigh about 150. Do the math, it's considerably larger than me. He's 6'3". I'm 5'8". But to my knowledge, he's never beat me in a fight. You know why? Because I was good at bluffing him out of him. <laughs> if I was ever in one, I would have lost. But if I could bluff him beforehand. Well, what does it say about little members? It says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Listen, you're going to speak bigger than you really are. That's where pride gets in the way. Right. Tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Incite your mouth. Listen, he said a little fire. A world of iniquity inside your mouth. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth. Listen, it makes the whole body. Defileth the whole body. And setteth on fire the course of nature. 
and it is set on fire where? Of hell. Can I just say you have a little piece of hell right inside your mouth. Be careful what comes out. Look at Romans chapter 3. Let's read it. Romans chapter 3. I think you read it tonight or ran over. That's what I wrote this down tonight while you're preaching. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 13, it says. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And their throat. Look, it mentions the mouth again. It connects this unrighteous lifestyle. There's none that seeketh God to their mouth. The throat is an open sepulcher. And their tongues, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Do you realize how important it is to wake up every morning and brush your teeth, if I may say? you got to clean out your ears and your eyes. But man, no one wants to be around anyone with dirty breath, with stinky breath. You better wash your mouth out. Hey, there's the stories. Man, you get thrown in jail for stuff like this now. But when I was a kid, and I'm back talking to my mom, you know what she do? She washed my mouth out with soap. And that kept me from saying it left a dirty taste. And can I say, when your mouth is dirty, sometimes the things that are good, the things that are clean, don't really appeal to you. You know, with a dirty mouth, toothpaste sometimes even takes a lot of adapt to. Why? Because your mouth's dirty. Our mouths get dirty. You still think, do we still think we're not dirty? Can I just say it's time for a bath? As all of us, it's time to make sure every morning it's time for a bath. Isaiah 6, 5, what does that say? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. We've all read the passage. Verse 5, it says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Why? Because his eyes were dirty? Because his ears were dirty? Was it his feet? Was that why he was undone? No, I don't think what he says. I'm done because I am a man of unclean lips. Are you undone tonight? That's good. And I dwell. Listen, he's a preacher. Now that's that's we gotta be cautious. We're supposed to be here. Our preacher. When we get in here, he was actively preaching. And he realized he had to stop here at the pulpit. And right. stop in his relationship with God. Said, Oh my. Amen. I'm undone. Why? Because I'm a man of unclean lips. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people. Listen, he acknowledged that he was no better than anyone in his congregation. He acknowledged he's just as guilty of sin, or just as, as capable of sin. Not that he was necessarily right. wicked, but he was just as capable. It's easy for a preacher to get up here after studying and praying and to think he's better than his congregation. Listen to me. We are no better than the people That's we are right. preaching to. Amen. We dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. But he said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. But mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Look at that. Compared to something clean, he realized how dirty he was. I'm going to read 1 Peter chapter 2 real quick, verse 1. 1 Peter, again, that was something I wrote down while he, the brother was preaching. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies, envies and all evil speaking. Of the chapter before that, verse 15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy, what? In all manner of conversation. He keeps talking about the mouth. How important is it? Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And the right. passages go on and on. Listen, we're talking about the head. Where to wash. First place you need to wash. Every morning, every day, is the head. Why? For all the reasons I gave. It's, it's, where the, it's the seat of the, the emotions. Your heart speaks of who's in charge. Your head is where temptation starts. We're going to move on. Where else to wash? And I could give an entire anatomy. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give three basic spots of the head. But then the stinky spots. No one likes to talk about those. We like to avoid those topics. But let's get to the nitty gritty. Again, I'm not going to be vulgar. Listen, the stinky spots. We all have them. We grew up being taught this. But when we get to church, we pretend that no one has them. We pretend we don't got them. Well, what are the stinky spots in Scripture? Do you think the Bible has something to say about our stinky spots? You mean the Bible even has something to say about that? I believe it does. This goes back to admitting we're dirty. Oh, I'm not dirty. Oh, I don't stink. Yes, you do. We all do. And we need a bath. Read Matthew chapter 6. I want you to turn there, please. Matthew chapter 6. Listen, the Bible even speaks of stinky spots. And I want you to listen closely of what they are in Scripture. Not my opinion, but in Scripture. Matthew 6, verse 6. But that, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, 
And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth thee in secret, shall reward thee openly. You say, what does that even mean? What's that have to do with anything? You see, our stinky spots are those that are private. Right. Our stinky spots no one else is supposed to see. You say, where are you going with this? Our stinky spots are the secret parts. So we can read what the Bible has to say about secret parts. And look what he says. He says, shut thy door. He didn't say get on Facebook and post how great your devotion was that morning. I didn't say it was wrong to praise the Lord. I didn't say it was wrong to boast, wrong to boast on Him. But when every morning you've got to open up the world, open up your life, your secret part to the Lord, you stink and you're dirty and you're doing nothing but wanting to expose your own nakedness and show the world what you look like. You, you, you cloak it in self-righteousness, but in all actuality, God said to cover it up. God said to keep it secret, but you reveal it to the world. We like to tell everyone how good we are. We like to tell everybody about our personal walk with the Lord. And God looks at you and says, I thought that was secret. I thought that was private. The Bible says not to speak of those things which are done in private. He's referring to man and woman when he says that. But listen, our worship is likened to the relationship of a man and a woman. Our prayer time, our secret prayer time before the Lord is not to be disclosed. It's not to be opened up for the world. It's secret. It's our secret parts. And when we disclose it to the world, we stink. Can I just say it is spiritually perverted to show the world your intimate relationship with the Lord. Right. I've got the scripture to prove it. Our secret parts, our private parts. It is, this isn't vulgar. I'm not being vulgar. What we watch on TV, what don't we allow our kids to do on the, on the internet, our search history on our computer, that's vulgar. This is the truth, but we don't like it, do we? We don't like to be told we're dirty, I'm guilty of the same. We don't like to be told that our head's dirty and that we stink. We don't like to be told that we stink. It's the truth, but we don't like it. You know who doesn't like to be told they're dirty? You know what? You know who doesn't like taking a bath? The ones I could think of. And that's children and animals. They don't like being told that they stink. They don't like to be told to take a bath. And you know what? They always stink. Little babies and animals always stink. You know why? Because they don't like being told to take a bath. What are two places that are considered our secret spots? Our secrets are just between us and God. You want to know? It's our prayer life and our attitude. You see, we can lie about what our attitude is, but God knows what our attitude is towards the brethren, towards Christians, toward him, towards his word. And when our attitude isn't dealt with in private, we stink in public. When our prayer life isn't consistent in private, we stink in public. Your prayer life affects your attitude. And one more spot. I've dealt with the head, the stinky spot, spots, and the feet. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. And this... This is the smallest point. Please look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. What does it say? I want you to look at this. I'm going to sum it up. I believe this point is important for, for preachers, but for anyone really. Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 15 it says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, look at John chapter 13. Well, I'll read it one more time. And your feet shod with the preparation of what? Of the gospel. Let's look at John chapter 13 real quick. Real quick. See what he's talking about. John chapter 13. Verse 5. John 13, 5 says. After that he poured into water into a basin. And began to wash the disciples feet. And to wipe them with the towel. Wherewith he was girded. Listen to me. Listen to me. It said your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You know what that tells me? That tells me that your feet, your head, we went over what that spoke of, your stinky spots, that's private. But what is your feet? Your feet, that's your ministry. You know something interesting about your feet? Look at John 13, verse 6. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? What does Jesus say in verse 7? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. And he goes on to say, say he can't. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands. But in verse 8, it says, Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Listen, we're getting the rhythm, man. We're washing the hand. We got the shampoo going. We get those stinky spots. We are on a roll. What comes next? The feet. And we say, Don't worry, God, I got this. 
You know, he requires you to wash out those things I just discussed. He requires you to deal with your stinky spots, your secret, your private life. But interesting enough, in verse 8, it comes to verse 8, it says, Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Your feet speak of your ministry. And guess what? God has got to do the washing there. It's not our choice what happens with our feet. You see, we choose what we think on, what we study, what we look at, what we say. We choose our prayer life, our attitude. But if you're right with God and you want to be clean with God, you cannot decide what happens to your feet. Your ministry is up to God. Your future is up to God. Your dreams, you've got to let God wash them away. And you've got to give your feet to God. And He tells you where to go. He tells you who to go to. He tells you what your ministry will be. It can't be based on your dreams. It can't be based on your desires. You've got to let God wash your feet. Amen. Or the rest of you will stay dirty. You'll be ministry. What did He say? You'll be visible, excuse me, in the ministry. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. He didn't say if I don't wash your head. He didn't say if I don't wash your heart. He said if I, he was talking about his feet. Right. And we become good in the ministry. We get to study. We, man, we got this down. And then God directs you a different way. We say, oh, don't wash me, Lord. I got this. He says, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Right. He says, oh, then wash all of me. Amen. Listen, I, we're talking about spiritual hygiene. The physical and the spiritual. You can take a physical bath, but you walk outside and your spirit stinks. Listen, that's what's wrong with our churches. We're starting to stink. You've got to get out of bed as a Christian. You've got to wake up and you've got to take a bath. That's right. and you know when the best time to take a bath is? I didn't ask, ask Dr. Oz. I'm a working man. I think we all are. You better take one in the evening if you've been working and gotten dirty in this world. That's right. But man, when you wake up, you might want to start with a bath. Right. You say, but I just took one the night before. I don't care. It's a new day. Amen. His mercies are new every morning. Why not take advantage of them? Listen, before we bathe, we've got to remove this covering. We've got to wash with the Word of God and the Spirit of God together. Not partial in the law. We've got to do both. Where to bathe and what to bathe with. But also, we've got to bathe our head, our, our secret spots, and our feet. But we'll have no part with the Lord. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your holiness. God, I ask that you would speak through these words. I don't, I don't want to grieve you, Lord. If, if there's somebody who's come to the altar, I don't know. But God, I ask that your will be done. I ask that you would be pleased, Lord. God, help us to examine our hearts. God, help us to examine our lives, our, our minds, our spiritual heart. Lord, examine, are we clean? Are our eyes clean, Lord? God, we're men. We're capable of sin every day. God, we get it right, but the next morning we're dirty again.